Lesson 10. It feels like the year is flying by already. Lesson 10 is actually the last lesson in Unit 1. Uh, Pre-calculus, some work with limits, a little bit with differentiability. Um, so the next lesson, the one you'll come to class for um, the day after tomorrow, well, yeah, the day after tomorrow. Uh, the next lesson will be just a review time where we try to put all our ducks in a row uh, and then test one will happen. So this will close out the new learning for unit one. And I want to do a couple of general principles here on differentiability. Uh, differentiability. Uh, by the way, when we talk about differentiability, a function that is differentiable has a derivative. So when a function has a derivative, it is differentiable. When a function is differentiable, it has a derivative. That derivative can be found in many cases, but not all. So let me give us a couple of general principles. This will be general principle one. Most continuous functions are differentiable. Most continuous functions are differentiable. By that, I mean your polynomials are differentiable, your trig functions are differentiable, your exponential functions are differentiable, because really, differentiable just, uh, this is actually a mathy term, smooth. They're smooth. Your polynomials are smooth. Your trig functions are smooth, mostly, tangent accepted. Uh, your, your exponential functions are smooth. And smooth functions have the ability to have tangent lines drawn. And if you can draw the tangent line to a curve at any point, it is differentiable. There are several common exceptions to the rule. I will draw four pictures. Picture number one is what happens where there is a corner. Where there is a corner, the function is not differentiable. Try to imagine, coming from the left side, tangent lines look like that. Coming from the right side, tangent lines look like that. But to be differentiable, the limits of the tangent lines from both sides have to match. Uh, and at the corner, those limits do not match. So at a corner, absolute value graph is a, a key example there. The function is not differentiable. It's continuous. It is not differentiable. Um, example two is what we call a cusp. At a cusp, one or both of the tangent lines goes up to infinity. Uh, that's a cusp. And so in that, it's different than a corner. In that situation, you can't draw a tangent line because a tangent line has to have a non-vertical. Uh, it's got to be non-vertical. It's got to have a non, it's got to have an actual slope. That's what I want to say. It's got to have an actual slope that's an actual number, and that doesn't happen if the, the tangent line is straight vertical. Um, example three is the case where there is a vertical tangent. That's not a cusp because it doesn't bounce back up, but that's got a vertical tangent line. And again, since a tangent line has to have a slope that is an actual number, vertical tangents are out. Um, example four, and I know this doesn't fall under general principle one, but if a function is discontinuous, you can't draw a tangent line. And if you can't draw a tangent line, then you don't have a derivative. And if you don't have a derivative, then you're not differentiable. That's the way that goes. So those are your four big exceptions. Um, there's a side note here. In the Finney DeMana Waits Kennedy text on page 109, there's a function that is nowhere differentiable. 
I mean, these four exceptions are places where you can draw the tangent line pretty much anywhere except that there's this one place where you can't. The, the side note here is that on page 109 in the finney demanowitz kennedy text, there is an example of a function that is nowhere different. There is no place where you can draw the tangent line to the curve. And because calculus works not just for simple, easy functions, but for crazy, ridiculous functions, it's worth a look. Is that going to pop up on the AP? Probably not. But, you know, it's, it's calculus we're studying. Um, general principle two will come in the form of a theorem. If a function is differentiable, meaning that it has a derivative, meaning that it is smooth. It is locally linear. That is a big, big piece. If a function is differentiable, it is locally linear. And I'll show you what I mean. You take some function, any function that's smooth. Uh, I put x squared up there. Any function that's smooth. That is a curvy function. You agree? Good. Now, let's zoom in on any piece that we like. Uh, how about this piece? We'll zoom in on this piece right here. Really? Really? Really, Sparky? Let's zoom in on this piece right here. Yep. And then I'll just keep zooming in on this curvy piece right here. I'll just keep zooming in on this curvy piece right here. I'll just keep zooming in on this curvy piece right here. And I'll tell you what, the closer you zoom in, the closer that thing looks to an actual line. Because differentiable functions in teeny tiny neighborhoods, neighborhood is an actual mathematical term, in teeny tiny neighborhoods, that thing is a line. Wait a second, coach. What you're telling me is that if I take a whole bunch of small straight things, I get a curvy thing. And the answer is yes. Yes, you do. If a function is differentiable, it is locally linear. In fact, that line on which you zoom is the tangent line to the curve. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. General principle three comes in the form of a theorem. If a function is differentiable, it is continuous. If a function is differentiable, then it is continuous. Wait a second, coach. Slow down there. You just said if you're continuous, then you're differentiable most of the time. Now you're saying all of the time. Wrong. The logic goes if this, then that. Not the other way around. The logic goes if the function is differentiable, then it is continuous. It is not true that if a function is continuous, then it is differentiable. You have a zillion counterexamples of that. If a function is differentiable, then it is continuous. If I tell you that a function is smooth, it has to be defined in any particular place. Uh, where does that pop up from an exam perspective? It pops up on multiple choice questions all the time, where you'll be told f prime of 2 equals 5. Which of the following things must be true? Oh, that's a great... Here, I'll just make that up right on the spot. Suppose... F is a function such that F prime of 2 equals 5, which must be true. And then they'll do one of these stupid Roman numeral things where, where you, you've got to pick and choice number 1 is F is continuous at X equals 2. And then f of 2 is 5, 
and then a uh, limit as x approaches 2 of f of x minus f of 2 over x minus 2 is 5. And then all the answer choices will be 1, 3, 1 and 2, 2 and 3, 4 and 6. It'll be like that. So what I want you to see is that if the function is differentiable, it has a derivative, it must be continuous. Choice one, a Roman numeral one, is true. Um, we don't know that f of 2 equals 5. We don't know that. We know the slope of the tangent line is 5. We don't know what the value of the function is. We know that f of 2 has to be something. But we don't know that it has to be 5. Uh, and then Roman numeral 3, just making sure everybody's clear, that's the definition of the derivative. So that is f prime of 2, which we are told is 5. And so we would pick whatever choice said Roman numeral 1 and Roman numeral 3. Okay? Okay. Hey, one more thing we should get good at doing. Let's pretend, shall we? Pull out the little red trolley and pretend. Let's pretend that he is my function f. What does f prime look like? What does f prime look like? Well, the thought here is, at this point right there, the tangent line appears to be horizontal. And the slope of a horizontal line is zero. And at this point right here, the slope appears to be positive, not large positive, but positive nonetheless. And so we come on down here and we get some positive number down there. And over here, I'll just go equal and opposite, the slope appears to be negative and just as bad as the positive one was. So I'll come on over here and get a slope that's negative and just as negative as the positive was. And so you get some beautiful curve like that. Well, really a line. We ought to get good at taking a look at a particular function and coming up with its derivative. Here's a beautiful function. I'll call that g. I'm interested in knowing what g prime is. And so there are two places where it appears that the function bottoms out. And those are, well, or tops out. And those would be places where the derivative is 0. It would appear that at this spot here, we're as negative as we're going to be, and that's fairly negative. So we'll come on down here, and that'll be that'll be fairly negative. And then at places like over here, now we're very positive. So I'll I'll go very positive, and at places like here, we appear to be very very positive and so I'll come on over here and be very positive and so you get some graph looks like this and then this is all the stuff we remember from our our basic introduction last year uh, where G is increasing where G is increasing G prime is positive right and where g is decreasing, g prime is negative, like that. Oh, ah, no, sorry. There. So those are some connections that we've made uh, in the past and that I make again with you. The basic idea here is that you ought to be able to draw tangent lines to a function estimate their slopes and use those estimates to construct an estimate of an f prime graph okay okay glorious that's all for now we'll catch up tomorrow thanks everybody